Insect specimens are to be stored indefinitely for scientific study, education, exhibition, and or exchanges. Therefore, insect specimens collected in the field should be cleaned and properly prepared, then dried and pinned, or preserved in fluid. This video shows the standard method used for mounting insect specimens and includes an introduction to the equipment and tools required for mounting and the skills and processes of pinning, height adjustment, leg and wing spreading, drying specimens, pin removal, and labeling. The equipment and tools needed to prepare pinned insect specimens include insect pins, pinning blocks, leg spreading boards, and wing spreading boards. A pair of forceps may be needed for smaller specimens. Stainless steel insect pins are used specifically for mounting insects. Regular pins are undesirable for pinning insects because they rust easily and may damage the specimen, thus reducing the value of the specimen. Genuine insect pins come in several sizes. From sizes double zero, zero, one, two, all the way to size six. One may select the appropriate pins for mounting insects of different sizes. For instance, pin size double zero, the smallest pin, is used for tiny, soft insects, while pin size six, the largest pin, is used for large, hard insects. Because the size of specimens vary, Insect pin holders may be useful for holding pins of many sizes and can enhance working efficiency. A pinning block, usually made of wood, is shaped like a three-step stair with holes drilled to depths of 2.5 centimeters, 1.6 centimeters, and 1.2 centimeters on the respective steps. Acrylic pinning blocks with similar function are now also available. Leg spreading boards, which are generally made of wood, but also of cork or styrofoam, are used so that the insect's legs will project out from its body, allowing for easy examination of the taxonomic characteristics. Wing spreading boards are made of wood with a groove across the board. The width of the groove may be fixed or adjustable. Wing spreading boards are used for spreading the wings of butterfly and moth specimens so that wing characteristics are visible for study. All materials mentioned above can be purchased from either biological or entomological supply companies. You may proceed to prepare the specimens when all the materials and tools are ready. Grasp the insect between your thumb and index finger then press the proper sized pin vertically through the thorax with another hand. Insects are usually pinned through the thorax between the bases of the forewings or slightly to the right of the midline. However, the pin location may be different depending on the type of insect. For instance, butterflies and moths are pinned through the center of the thorax. Beetles are pinned through the right elytron going through the metathorax and emerging through the metasternum. Grasshoppers are pinned through the posterior part of the pronotum just to the right of the midline. True bugs are pinned through the scutellum. Dragonflies and damselflies are pinned either vertically or horizontal with the left side facing upward. All pinned specimens must be mounted at a uniform height on the pin. To maintain uniformity, the pin is inserted into the hole of the top step of the pinning block after the specimen is placed on the pin. Once a specimen is pinned at the correct position and height, it's desirable to extend the legs so that all parts can be easily visible for study. The legs should be spread symmetrically to make the specimen look neat and appealing. Antenna and abdomens deserve extra attention. Use glass-headed pins to hold them in the desired position and prevent them from sagging or twisting until the specimen is dry. Wing spreading boards are used to spread the wings of butterflies and moths. First hold the thorax of the insect with your thumb and index finger. Then use the other hand to pin insect like any other pinned insects. 
Insert the pin into the groove of the wing spreading board until the wings are flush with the surface of the board. As the specimen is properly positioned, the wings of the specimen are held by a strip of tracing paper. The wings are then moved into position by pins or forceps. Pull the forewing forward until the hind margin of the wing is at a right angle to the body. Secure the forewing in position by inserting a glass-headed pin. Bring the hind wing into position with its base slightly under the forewing. Secure the hind wing into position by inserting a glass-headed pin. Repeat the same procedure to position the wings on the other side. The hind margin of the forewings should be at right angles to the body and the forewings equally spread apart. Once in place, the specimen needs to be dried in an oven for 5 to 7 days at 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. The length of the drying process may vary depending on the specimen. When dried, remove all of the pins except the main one through the thorax. The next step is to label the dried specimen. The paper used for making labels should be heavy enough that the labels remain flat and do not rotate loosely on the pin. Labels must be printed in high-grade ink that will not fade over time. The information that the label bears should be clear and easy to read. The first label or the top label under a specimen is the collection label and should contain basic information such as the locality and date of collection and the collector. The label is centered under the specimen and the insect pin should go through the spaces between the lines so that all characters can be read. Position the collection label on the middle step of the pinning block so that all collection labels are at a uniform height on the pins. Additional information such as host of the insect, collection method, or the scientific name of the insect may be recorded on the second or the third label. These labels are oriented and pinned the same way as the first label. They may be moved up the pin to the desired height by inserting the pin into the lowest step of the pinning block. Once the specimen and its labels are properly positioned, the specimen preparation comes to an end. Now is the time to place the prepared specimen into a unit tray or drawer for permanent storage.